my pleasure to be here to introduce you some kind of new task that we have in computer vision that is called the, the vision question answering. So I am professor in Ipsis and I'm working with uh, uh, Ludovic Denoyer, the, the previous speaker in the MLA team that is headed by uh, Professor Patrick Gallinari. And so we do a lot of work on machine learning, deep learning, and uh, for the computer vision side, um, I'm working a lot with my students on uh, uh, doing some deep learning system for vision and with different kind of, uh, uh, of things like uh, weekly supervised things, for instance. But the subject today, uh, I've been done with two of my PhD students, Eddie Ben Younes and Remy Caden. And I'm going to talk uh, a bit about that, that task, okay? And uh, the, our approach is called Mutant. I'm going to, to explain shortly later how it works. So the, the, the question, visual question answering, let's start with the, the question answering problem that is something like uh, is Paul in the room, for instance, but when you consider the visual things, you add something like uh, one image, and, and then the question is related to something that is also inside the image, right? And so we expect to develop machines that are able to give the right answer for that, and something like yes, no, perhaps on the left or on the, or at the back and so on, okay? And so for, for us, this is really, I mean, like for research and also for, for industrial application, a very, uh, certainly very interesting things that we have to put together different kind of um, deep models, let's say, or I, I mean, I mean uh, representation of the content in a multimodal context, okay, all right? And this is really, I mean, for me, like uh, one step to go through uh, a nicer interaction with machine that may include, of course, the ability of the machine also to see, not only to understand some question, textual question. Right? We are used in, in computer vision to consider the relationship between the images and uh, the language as something like we have the classification uh, things. So, so we have images as input and we have some labels actually on the uh, language side. So I mean here typically the, the, the kind of output may be restaurant people and things like that. And really I mean like of course you all, all of you know, know that, that, that it was very well now, I mean, since the, the deep revolution, okay, or rebirth, and also even to, to convince our politics, and I'm, 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 I had a meeting with Thierry Mandon, the last minister, uh, research minister in France, and to, to really convince him that it can work, I exactly did the same kind of, of demo using the same machine and producing the, this kind of result, and he was quite com comfortable that it's interesting uh, to work with these kind of things. But of course, for the, the computer vision point of view, when we want to go uh, deeper on, on this relation, usually we are very interesting to be able to produce some labels, no more for the, the whole image, but at the pixel level, okay, something like that, so you are uh, we are able to say where are and, and how each pixel is impacted when we are looking for coal, uh, for instance, or people, or car, or mo motorcycle. Okay, so just to summarize in the big picture, uh, on the one side we started with a whole image with a single label, and then we go through on, on the right side to the label density uh, direction where we consider having more labels inside the image at the region, the bounded box side, for instance, up to the, the pixel size. We can go also down and consider that it could be interesting, of course, to have a, um, a more complex answer uh, in terms of language for uh, the image. And this is what I've been called the captioning, right? So this is really the idea to, to, to go from keyword to sentences. All right, and so the, this is uh, the, the big picture on how we can do that. So we have on one side images that we are going to embed them in a multimodal space where on the other side we are also able to uh, embed some text representation, okay? And inside this, this space, of course, when we can revert the process also, for instance, from the middle to, to the uh, 
uh, to the right side here, that means that we are able from one image to go through a textual representation. So this, uh, this, this process is called image captioning. We have some example uh, here, okay? But of course, the point is we have to learn this kind of uh, both embedding. So that means we have to have data to align them, okay? And here I show one example from colleagues uh, recently presented in a CVPR. That's really, I mean, like have document where it makes sense to have on one side the picture, here the salmon picture, and on the other side some description about the recipe, for instance. Huh? And so they can by pair, and then we can try to infer uh, how to learn the multimodal alignment together. Right? And so they, they, they did that on one side, but we have, of course, in terms of learning and things, many problems to consider how uh, we can define the objective function for learning that and so on. And sometimes we are uh, obliged to, to add some constraint and things like that. So we are working in my lab on that, and we have a demo that you can try during the lunch break if you want. I can now, yes, really go to the VQA uh, problem that is quite similar, except that as input, you have the image plus the question. So you have two type of data. As input, you want to go for a certain space and then to be able from that space to produce the answer. So you have example on that, for instance, on the right side, uh, there are different data sets that have been produced recently by colleagues. To do that, so one image, one question, for instance, what does this man read while wearing a black wetsuit, right? And the answer, of course, for training is also available in that case is uh, surfboard, right? Uh, by analyzing the type of answer that people usually produce, we are able to define some, 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 somehow that, for instance, 2,000 or 10,000 type of, reason of answer is enough, okay? And so usually people simplify the problem by considering that their answer size is like a classification problem, right? So from both image plus question, I go for a multimodal space and then I go to a classification problem to produce the answer, right? But of course we have to consider some, some many different uh, small difficulties that we can have on that. For instance, here, if I have this question or that question, the answer will be different. So in terms of, of contents, only one word change in the question, the image is the same, but the answer has to be different, right? It can be the same things uh, on the other side. So we can also produce sometimes very similar images in terms of content, uh, in terms of people smiling, uh, things like that, ambience, uh, different things. But they are different, and the questions are the same, and the answer has to be different. It has to be different also, right? And so we really need, of course, to have like uh, as good as possible. Uh, uh, visual and questioning representation. Okay, so this, is, this is the first step, of course. And also, to uh, correctly model this kind of problem, we also need, really need to have, to, to, to correctly modeling the interaction and the multimodal interaction between uh, the different uh, sensors. So I'm going to explain the two things that, uh, that are really important here. This is the merging things, uh, first step, and the second step is about the attentional process that we can add to that, okay? So let's start with the, 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 the basic approach to solve this task, okay? You have on one side um, a question representation where you, we have this kind of uh, of uh, seconds modeling with uh, recurrent normal nets that have been presented uh, also during the, 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 the conference this morning, right? And on the, the right side, you have like a way to model the image, let's say here, like with uh, using a deep conf net. And then from this two representation, you are going to produce the feature that we want to couple in the model, um, multimodal modeling and classify uh, to predict the answer. So this is the instantiation on, on, on how to do that on one example. So typically the, here, one image and the question associated to that image, for instance, is the, the mustache real here? OK, 
case, the answer is no, actually. Uh, if we can zoom on, into the image, you will see that it's something that has been drawn uh, on the picture, right? But let's say so on the, on the side, image side, you have the classical uh, deep uh, ResNet that is uh, very um, well used and, and produce very good result on classifications. And then you can extract from that one vectorial representation. So one image, one vector, okay? For the question, you also do the same kind of uh, RNN using a group, for instance, and then you produce also one vector. This is uh, called Q here, all right? And the question of fusion is then how to produce from both representation, how to mix them together, there's two vectors, in order to produce not one score, similarity score, but here a vector uh, scoring all the information that we can put together in order to produce after the right answer. So many things have been proposed on, on that case. Classically, you can concat the, the vector and find some, some linear or deep, deep transform from that, okay? But I have to see that we really noticed in the different paper and how people did it uh, in, the, in, the, in the scientific community is, and, and the star method finally to, for the merging, when you have to combine them and finally uh, heterogeneous information is uh, element-wise product. So that means you um, multiply each component of, of both uh, side together. And of course then you produce a vector, right? And here you can also, of course, first transform each, uh, each domain using a W or V matrix. And this, this kind of uh, element-wise uh, element product actually is, is uh, related to the, 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 the global term that we call a bilinear uh, transformation, bilinear modeling of the problem. And the two leading techniques to, to, to do VQA use some kind of uh, for Fokui uh, for or Kim uh, teams, okay, use th this kind of bilinear pooling in their, in their scheme, right? And so uh, it means, like, um, if you see the, the equation, that each component of the, the output, so I mean it's yk, may be decomposed as a sum over all the, the way to combine in a product as I say, each dimension of the both inputs, right? So this is classically uh, represented by a tensor in a tensor scheme, right? T uh, here, this is a three-way tensor, right? But I have to say that it's quite different than the usual way to do tens tensor analysis that we have in si signal processing, where the, the data are coming and may be expressed as a tensor. Right? And then from that tensor, we try to, to, to structure or to analyze this tensor in order to represent the data. Here, it, we want to learn all the parameters of the tensor. We have no, no more a problem of data representation, but data combination, data merging. Right? So it changed a little bit because it's a learning problem in that case, right? And of course, one, one of the, 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 the big problem is the huge size of such a tensor, right? It can be very quickly impossible to learn, uh, I mean, the whole, the, the whole block, right? So we have to use also that very well-known decomposition and representation, so we have to put some structure into the tensor in order to produce a I mean, nice uh, uh, system, right? So what we did in, a, in, a, in that work with the, the students is that we, we uh, express all the techniques into this, this kind of general framework, okay? C coming here, for instance, on the left side, you see the way that MLB expressed the problem. And so what you see is that you have some projection and in color W uh, both sides. And then you have the core tensor. And then you have, again, a uh, projection for the output. But if you see this, the core tensor in that case, this is the uh, elementary uh, diagonal uh, uh, tensor that is not learned. I mean, the coefficients are fixed. And it's exactly corresponding to the element-wise product I was talking before. Right? But we can express some, some kind of more tricky relation, and it's what we, we did in, in the mutant scheme, where actually also the core, the core tensor may be learned. 
that was for the first part, and I think this is a very general problem when you want to mix together two, two kind of data that are coming by, by uh, different uh, uh, sensor typically, right? And you want to produce no more like just a similarity, but to be able to produce something that can be a vectorial representation used for uh, the next step, right? Uh, the, the other point is about the attention on process, right? And this is a, certainly the first step to do rezoning. Up to now, we have represented the image as a whole vector, okay? But if we want to take uh, into account the information, the special information into the image, okay, that is usually to, to pay attention to some part and to read off some other part that do not seem very interesting to answer to the question, okay? We have to switch to the, this kind of attention process and we can uh, do it very simply uh, by uh, having a grid on the image and then to produce some, some kind of, of no more one vector, but le let's say a cube of vector represented each part of the image, right? And then actually we can redo the same kind of things that we did before, just in order to, to bias, I mean, the, and, and then to weight each part of the image thanks to the query, thanks to the, the question we have. So that means if that, that some part of the images are not interesting to answer to that question, is the mustache real, they will be weighted with a very low weight, and so they will disappear uh, in the final uh, vector representation of the, of the um, visual process. And then after, thanks to this uh, new vectorial one, we are able to merge them together as before. Okay, so one example to show that, okay, two different questions on the same image. If you see on the top, okay, what is sitting on the desk in the front of the boy, it's more interesting to focus on the foreground, so, okay, and so it's down, and you have the heat map here that's, that really, I mean, select, okay, the foreground, and then is able to produce the answer on laptops, okay, when uh, in the same time, um, uh, on, the, on the bottom uh, example, you are going to focus on the background and to produce the books. Answer, right? And then just to, to say that this kind of attentional process is really, I mean, like uh, an exciting topic for the community at the moment. And uh, just to mention that the last winner of the, the big challenge in CVPR on that was really, I mean, just trying to refine this is kind of attentional process, but no more considering a fixed grid inside the image, but uh, as you see on the, the right side, some detector, predefined detector that they, they call bottom-up attention region, let's say, produced by uh, an algorithm, and then working with that region into, uh, the, the, um, into the process of, uh, for VQA, okay? And this, this allows to really have a, a huge gap in, in uh, in terms of uh, performances for this kind of system, right? And uh, so, and just to conclude, there is that, that really, I mean, like that, that there are a, um, a lot of initiative uh, in the computer vision community to produce new data set, to correct the bias of the, the first data set, uh, to be able, for instance, to better evaluate the role of image understanding in, in this kind of visual question answering, right? And we also have uh, uh, another initiative coming from, uh, from uh, other colleagues that try to, to produce a new data set that is a synthetic data set to really analyze very carefully, I mean, how we, we can identify attribute, visual attribute, how we can realize some kind of counting into the, into the scene to compare different uh, size, different uh, uh, number of uh, objects that we can um, have, special relationship and things like that. And this is uh, the other that I said, uh, to be able to, to answer to the kind of question, I, are there an equal number of large things and metal spheres, right? Okay, that is not very, I mean, easy to answer like that. Right, we really have to, to have a deep analysis on, on how things are. Okay, and so really I think that th this kind of um, visual question answering is really, I mean, like the first step to go through a, a more intuitive interaction with machine, including this, uh, this kind of visual information. Thank you very much for your attention.